What's going on, Blazer fans? Welcome in to the Blazers Uprise podcast. We start off this podcast with an injury update. Uh, Scala Bissier is confirmed to have... What, what'd you say it was called? Eric said it to me. I honestly can't remember. It's something very weird, foreign sounding. It's knee articular cartilage lesion. <laughs> um, so, so Scout, sorry, my, my tripod is messed up. I didn't even think about that before I started recording. Yeah, so Scout Labissier is going to be reevaluated in four weeks due to that injury. So it's expected that he'll be out to the All-Star break. I expect him back after the All-Star break. The All-Star break is in... A little over four weeks. Um, yeah, a little over four weeks. It starts like February 13th. Right now, it's January 8th. So, I expect Scala Bissier to be back after the All-Star break. That gives him like uh, five and a half weeks or so. Uh, so, I think that's a pretty firm timetable. As firm as a timetable as we've gotten with any injury we've had so far this season. Um, but, depending on how you uh, you know viewed viewed his injury, this might be a good thing to you this might be a bad thing i know some blazer fans were hoping to have him back after this road trip some blazer fans were just hoping that we didn't lose him for the season so depending on how you looked at it uh this could be good news or bad news uh this is about what i expected i didn't expect something catastrophic uh but given that it's a cartilage thing now it kind of makes sense why the swelling uh, made the results of the MRI inconclusive, and they had to wait for that to go down. Um, yeah. Do you have any information on what exactly that injury is? Or um, It says where the articular cartilage, and if I'm remembering an- anatomy right, I think articular is on the outside, right? Okay. And medial is on the inside. I might have that backwards, but... Um, We're playing doctor here. Yeah, so... Uh, so... The cartilage of the knee joint is affected, um, some sort of like tear or bruise or um, some sort of condition that causes it to be disrupted or cause a like a lesion. I, I just consider like kind of a bruise or like a like it's banged up basically. Yeah. Um, the good thing is that's not one of his uh, tendons, so. Not the ACL, MCL, or PCL. So I think that's good for him long term. Um, it should just go away with rest. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Pa- patriotic truth says medial is inside. So I was right. Gotcha. Good job, Dr. Brandt. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, we'll, we'll get him back after the All Star break. I wonder now if this is confirmed that he's out for weeks. If Fulshay will go out and sign a backup big, but he hasn't really done so. Uh, Marquise Chris might be an interesting option. He kind of had a little bit of a revitalization. Uh, mm-hmm. Did I say that right? I probably said that wrong. Um, but sure. he kind of. <laughs> I shouldn't ask you for for uh, feedback on pronunciation. Uh, but Marquise Chris was having a decent season for the for the Golden State Warriors, uh, passing the ball a little bit, uh, pretty efficient, and he ended up getting cut. I was a bit surprised to see him get cut. So that might be a solid backup center option. I don't like his attitude i don't like his overall demeanor on the court uh but he might be a good backup option you know him or for reed uh so you know do we go out and get a guy like that what do you think well maybe playing in golden state i know it curry's hurt now but earlier in the year you know he was practicing with curry and draymond green and those kind of guys maybe that kind of rubbed off on him some work ethic as opposed to playing in a place like phoenix where True. it seems it seems like uh the whole organization is a little um well, he went, yeah. i don't know what the, i don't know right the, what the right word is but they don't know how to win you know well he went um, from phoenix to cleveland so yeah yeah um you know that that was well, he, he was on Houston for a while too. Okay, um, yeah, he was on Houston, but that's just kind of watched did, James Harden do his thing, <laughs> right? Um, so hopefully it kind of uh, rubbed off on him a little bit, but um, yeah, I don't know. Chris is okay. I mean, I wouldn't mind taking a flyer on him. Yeah, I mean, it's just going to be tough to to go for four weeks over this upcoming schedule schedule with Anthony Tolliver as the backup center. That's not a recipe for success. The teams we play are too good. You can maybe get away with it against like a Houston team who doesn't really have a, a big backup center. I think who plays backup center for Houston? I can't, I can't even figure it out off the top of my head, but our, uh, well, 
they have Nene, but he might be hurt. He doesn't really uh, play. So, like, against smaller teams. Well, they have Tyson Chandler, but he's not playing a lot either. Yeah. So, against against teams that go small, against smaller teams, we might be fine without Scal for four weeks. We might be fine playing Anthony Tolliver at the backup center. But against bigger teams, it's going to be a struggle for us. I mean, we saw with the Toronto Raptors, they had, what, 11 offensive rebounds in the first half? I think it was like 11 offensive rebounds with still five minutes left in the first half, if I recall correctly. So uh, we've been getting crushed on the boards, especially with that second unit, especially with Whiteside out of the game. We're relying a bit too much on Whiteside right now to play minutes. Uh, if Whiteside gets in foul trouble, we're basically screwed, even if we're playing against a bad team. So, I mean, if this team is serious about really trying to recover from this awful start and make a run, I do think that we need to go... Uh, acquire a backup big right now because Tolliver isn't going to get it done. So someone said something to me on the forum that made me go and research it a little bit more. The um, The disabled player exception is not exactly like having an extra roster spot. You have to have at least four guys hurt or you'd have to cut someone or do something with it. Uh, so... I think that's why they're probably going to go the 10-day contract route so it doesn't um, hurt with that. They're probably waiting to see what the diagnosis was on Scal. But you have right now you have Scal, Collins, Nurk, and Hood all out long term. Hopefully Nurk is back within the next yeah. few weeks to a month. Um well, once Nurkic is back, we don't need whoever we sign as the stopgap right. for our backup center behind Whiteside. You know, we'll probably trade Whiteside, but I expect us to get a big back some a big back somewhere. Uh, so we just need somebody to hold us over until Nurkic is back. We kind of, you know, once Nurkic comes off the injury list, we'd only have three injured players. So then we probably couldn't keep the player we used the disabled exception on. Um, but you know, that's an interesting, interesting well, uh, situation there. The, the fact that Scal's out past the trade deadline, though, does kind of change things because if you didn't end up using that extra roster spot or if you made a trade like Bazemore going out and you just included one of our minimum contract guys so we didn't bring back like a two-for-one type situation, it was a two-for-two, two, then it wouldn't really matter about those guys. Um, yeah. But yeah, hope, hopefully there's not another injury because then it would – it'd be pretty clear that it would be easy to sign someone with that spot. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, if Scott but, was lost for the season, Nurk was lost for the season, Collins was lost for the season, we could just use that disabled player exception on a guaranteed contract signer for the rest of the year. Um, but if you have to have four players out, obviously that makes things tricky. And at this point in the season, now we're past the deadline to sign someone on a non-guaranteed contract. So that doesn't make sense either. I would think that would have made sense earlier in the year. Um, when we first started having injury problems to sign someone like we did initially with Carmelo to a non-guaranteed contract. And then at this time we'd be deciding to keep him for the rest of the year or cut them. Um, but that that's come and gone. Uh, so yeah, it's, you're looking at either wasting a roster spot, um, at least temporarily or, um, bringing in someone on a 10 day contract or multiple 10 day contracts. Yep. Uh, I just wanted to respond to this comment, playing White said, Nurk isn't coming back and playing huge minutes right away. Uh, I just wanted to dispel this notion because it's been said that Nurk is not going to have limitations when he comes back. When he comes back, he's just they're going to throw him right in and, you you know, use him normally. Like, they're not going to bring him back until he's 100% ready. Once he's 100% ready, he, he's going to play, you know, obviously his conditioning might limit his minutes but that's the only thing i keep seeing people oh once nurkic comes back you know he's not going to be able to play that much and he's not uh you know gonna play many minutes uh it's been reported otherwise uh and when you look at when nurk is supposed to return from this injury it's like 10 and a half months after the injury that's a pretty long recovery timeline i expect him back sometime around the all-star break which starts february 12th he got hurt march 25th of last year so that's uh, that's 10 and a half months to recover. So I think he'll be ready to get thrown in right away. Um, so I just want to uh, respond to that. Um, yeah, I think people are kind of, because he won't be maybe 100% mentally or condition-wise, like you said. Yeah. Um, so I think it's just the way of people to like kind of temper expectations a little it bit. It makes sense, but, you know, I mean, don't, don't expect Nurkic to be 
Nurk from last year right away. That's how I temper expectations. Uh, yeah. But now we get to go into picks against the spread. In the future, right. I'll probably start these podcasts with like a topic first and then get into picks against the spread just so we have more people in chat. Today, I don't have... Uh, Today I don't have the transition slides for these games, sadly, mm. but uh, you know we got the graphics. So here we go. We're gonna start off with our first game. I think it's probably already tipped off, uh, but you know it would have just started right now. So we got yep. Toronto in Charlotte against the Hornets. Toronto is favored by three and a half points on the road. My pick is Charlotte. Toronto played last night against us, so that's second night of a back-to-back. They're super banked up. Now they're it's a home road back-to-back. Those are always tough. So that's an easy Charlotte pick for me. Uh, who you got, Eric? I'm taking Toronto. I just think they're the better team, even with their injuries. And I think um, coming off that tough loss last night, it's always good to get right back out on the court and um, play again. Uh, most of their guys, other than Lowry and Ibaka, are, are younger guys too, so I don't think the back-to-back will affect them that much. Gotcha, yep. Uh, are you able to keep track of chat's picks? Yep, I got gotcha. you. All awesome. So moving on to game number two, we got Orlando at home against the Washington Wizards. This is a 9.5 point spread. Uh, Orlando is favored here, and what me and you are going to start doing in the future is we're going to pick one of our picks, and we're going to double down on it, okay? So we're going to, you know, whatever pick we're most confident in, we'll double down on it, and that'll count for either two losses or two wins um, instead of just one. Uh, So this is actually both of our double down games. Uh, I'm going with the Washington Wizards. I think this spread is way too high. The Wizards are playing great, even though they're super injured. Ish Smith is killing it. Uh, that win we picked up against them in Washington, actually looking a little bit better because they've beat the Heat, the Celtics, and I forget the other team, but it was another playoff team, maybe Toronto. I don't know. Uh, but they've beat some good teams with all the injuries they have, uh, you know, because injuries doesn't stop you from winning games. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, Washington uh, with a, you know, if they lose by nine, you know, Washington pick works for it. That's a huge spread for the Wizards. Uh, Magic haven't been playing that great. So I'm doubling down on this one. I'm picking the Wizards. And didn't Washington just beat Orlando in Orlando recently? Uh, wouldn't surprise I me. I want to say. Uh, but anyways, Dame Dollar is asking if Chat can do the double thing. How about this? Just remember the one game that you feel the strongest about at the end. Uh, we'll ask Chat for the game they want to double down on and whichever game gets the most we'll do we'll pick as their double down that's a great idea awesome i didn't even think about that sorry chat wasn't considering (laughs) um but uh your pick wizards yep yep and you're you're doubling down. down on that too i think that's an easy game to double down on all right game number three we got the Spurs in San Antonio going up against the Boston Celtics. The Celtics are favored by 6.5 points on the road, and I'm going with the San Antonio Spurs. So uh, I went with the Spurs against the Bucks, mm-hmm. and they won outright. They blew out the Bucks, uh, yep. and I felt like I was going out on a limb with that pick, and that pick ended up being right. So the Spurs at home again, they're playing better basketball. The Celtics have kind of been struggling. Um, I got the Spurs. Who you got? I'm going to take the Celtics at home in this one. Um, I thought the Spurs were at home. I think it's I think it's in Boston. Um, I think we got that backwards. Let me check. Oh, yeah, I did get that backwards. Oh, well. Um, I'm still going with the Spurs there. It's okay. in, in uh, Boston. In Boston. Yeah. I rushed these the Spurs have been bit. playing better. Um, and yeah, they just did beat the Bucks, but I just have a feeling Boston's going to come out and gotcha. have a good game tonight. Gotcha. So one part I forgot to get to, we'll get to it now before we get deeper into this. What were our records on on Monday? How did we do? What are our records now? Uh, Tori, you were three and five, I and Chat and myself was four and four. Wow, I thought it was a lot better we, than that. We had one game, the OKC Philly game, ended with a tie because it was. Uh, gotcha. Philly seven point victory. Yeah, uh, you got Orlando missed on the Boston over Washington, which we all missed on. Yeah. You had Char- Charlotte over Indiana, who lost. Um, you picked Utah, 
and they oh yeah they they beat the pelicans by two they're two and yeah. a half point spread that killed me there, all right dude, yeah, i believe it like six out of the eight games i think were within one point of the spread so like it could have gone <laughs> either way it did yeah pretty close true, but... true. all righty we got indiana pacers at home against the miami heat uh, miami is favored by one and a half points on the road i'm going with the pacers pacers are underrated uh he might have Jimmy Butler back, but regardless, being the favor favor on the road against a good Indiana team, it's easy to go with Indiana for me. Who you got? I'm also going with Indiana at home, um, getting points. I like that option. All right. Now we got Dallas in Dallas going up against the Denver Nuggets. Dallas is favored by three points. I'm rolling with Dallas. I've learned my lesson not to bet against Dallas. It screwed me at the <laughs> beginning of the season. Uh, three points isn't that much for a good Dallas team at home. Uh, Nuggets have not really impressed me this year. They've won a lot of games, but their schedule has been, uh, their schedule has been easy to say the least. Uh, their bench isn't producing the same. So I'm going with Dallas. I'm going to take Denver in this game. I'm still not buying Dallas and I, <laughs> I'd probably dumb to not. I don't buy them long term. So, yeah. But, uh, I just think Denver has a more talented roster. They have some guys who can guard. Doncic without um, too much trouble, and I think Porzingis has missed the last few games too. Uh, so I like Denver in this one. Yeah, for me, it's just not been against Dallas anymore because it has not worked out for me in the past. All right, yeah. next game we got the Hawks going to Houston. Oh wait, is it? In, it's in Atlanta. Okay, uh, we got yeah Atlanta going up against the Houston Rockets. Rockets are favored by eight points. I think this is a pretty easy game to pick. I got the Rockets. Eight points is not enough. Huge differential between these teams. Uh, what you got? Agreed. Nothing really more Agreed. to say on that All one. All right, there we go. We got the Rockets for both our picks. Uh, Chats rolling to, with Houston as to, well. We're going who did at, they pick in the Dallas-Denver game? You can one, one. Scroll back through that one. We got Pelicans in the Big Easy. Going against the Chicago Bulls. Uh, I got the Pelicans, five and a half points. That's, I don't know, this was probably the hardest game for me to pick. Uh, but the Pelicans are playing better. The Pelicans are picking it up. The Pelicans are actually a threat for the playoffs, believe it or not. Um, they're, they're they're picking it up. They're getting healthier. Brandon Ingram, Drew Holiday, Alonzo Ball is healthy now, and he's been playing uh, solid basketball for them. So five and a half points. I'm wrong with the Pelicans, but that was definitely a hard game to pick. Yeah, I agree. I, I thought about picking the Bulls in this one, but I went with New Orleans just because they have been playing a lot better, and the Bulls are so hard to predict in these games. So yeah. um, I just I'll just stick with the hot team. All righty. Second to last game, we got the Jazz in Utah. The spread is actually fourteen and a half points now. You said it's up to fourteen now. Okay. Yeah. This spread. Uh, last minute bump up to 14 regardless i'm going with the knicks so it didn't really make a difference to me going up to 14 helped me even more i don't know why that spread go went up to 14 but knicks are playing better basketball as of late better basketball under mike miller everybody was saying oh david fisdale uh you know uh he it wasn't justified his firing they screwed him over but Mike Miller comes in, and this team has played better, noticeably better. And Mike Miller didn't yep. have any head coaching experience before that. Uh, I've always thought David Fisdale was a little bit overrated, um, and this might kind of confirm that in a way. Uh, so Utah's been struggling, too. They barely beat the Pelicans on Monday. 14-point uh, spread, 11.5-point spread. It doesn't make a difference to me. I'm taking the Knicks. Yeah, I like getting that many points on on the or, uh just not not necessarily against a bad team, but like Utah is not like this next game we're going to talk about after this, where um, they usually kill bad teams. Um, they've been playing a lot of close games this season, so getting that many points, I'll take yep. it. Melo Stay says David Fistel, Terry Stotts, who's better? That's a tough question for me. I think they're about even, to be honest. Um... Those are both great assistant coaches. <laughs> <in my opinion. laughs> great assistant coaches. Yep. Uh, Milwaukee going to Golden State for our last game of the day. We got the Bucks favored by 13 and a half points. The Bucks blow out a lot of teams. They just got blown out by the Spurs, surprisingly. You know, I picked the Spurs in that game just to, you know, I thought it might be a close game. The Spurs kind of <laughs> whooped their butt. But uh, we got the, the Bucks are my pick. 
13 and a half points. It's a big spread, but the Bucks are so much better than this Warriors team. It's it's not really that difficult for me to pick. Yeah, I think that loss should help motivate them to get a win on this one. They don't want to lose another game on this road trip. So um, I picked the Bucks as well. Yeah. All right. Looks like chat's rolling with the Bucks too. So chat, who is who? What pick are you most confident in? What pick are you most confident in? I want to hear what pick you're doubling down on, as Eric explained earlier. Um, and then we'll uh, we'll roll into the next part of this show. Um, we got two for the last one and two for the next one. <laughs> Bucks most confident. Can I go over the games again? If I Before. forgot them. All right, we had this. This this slider is gonna play a lot. I don't know if the sound effects still, but it might be annoying. But we got that. Boom, 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 boom. I'm it's just four. Rifling through these. <laughs> it's four four for either the the Bucks or the Knicks right now. So one more person voting on either the Bucks or the Knicks would get it done. Alrighty. Honestly, for yeah. in the future, I'll probably just pick one random person out of the chat to double down for chat. That's what I'm going to do in the future. That'll be a lot easier. Um, so anyway, moving on to the, to the next segment of this podcast. Uh, I want to talk a little bit more about that game last night. Because we had a short post game show. Sadly, it sucked, man. Because that was the that was the best post game show in a while. You know what I mean? Like the most positive post game show that we could have had in a while. Um, and we had to cut it short because I had rec league. Uh, I hate when games are on Tuesday, Thursday. I at least hope they're at like seven thirty, and I got a game at six thirty or something, or I make you know play seven thirty and miss the. Oh, we won. We beat. Uh, my team's actually solid. I accidentally f- fixed my hours too much. I woke up at six a.m. yesterday, so I was like half asleep for my game. I'm out of shape. Okay, I'm so out of shape, dude. We had that Christmas layoff, and it's funny because everybody comes back so rusty, so out of shape, so much slower. Um, but yeah, so usually I play. I try and like. Uh, we got eight, six thirty, seven thirty, eight thirty time slots. Uh, usually I try and like sub in a game for a team that might not have all its players uh and i try and use that as a warm-up for my game usually that gets me warmed up for my game lately i'm so out of shape that i'm just exhausted once it's time for my game and i waking up at 6 a.m i find myself like feeling half asleep um but i could be i could be one for ten i'll still get the most like i'll still get the best defender guarding me i'll still get the most attention on offense so literally, mm-hmm. I'll, literally down the stretch, I just kept kept feeding this guy who's a really solid player, uh, who was just destroying his his uh. He had a mismatch on him consistently. Kept facing up, looking like Mello basically, uh, and they didn't get. They were paying more attention to me. They were not helping on him, not doing anything. So it literally just turned into like Stotts fence in a way, but it was working, <laughs> you know, because frankly, I was just feeding him the ball, getting out of the way, wind down the clock. Um, but uh, dude, I gotta work on my shot, dude. My shot is is rough right now. It was getting better too, but two week layoff, I got so rusty. Yeah. It's so bad. So a uh, little bit of news for myself. I just got cleared yesterday to start some some cardio again. It's been a little over five months since my surgery, and then I can also start jogging and trying to run a little bit starting February 1st. So I'm pretty excited about that. I think I'm out of shape. You're going to be so out <laughs> I of know, shape. Dude. You're going to you're going to get out of shape literally like jogging jogging down the court once. I feel like yep. <laughs> that's uh but good luck with that, man. Um you know. Thanks. Let's see let's see yeah, how gonna, much your vertical has increased. I'm going to try to do uh, like a lot of uh bike and elliptical until that point, so Yeah. At least have some sort of uh, conditioning, but yeah. <laughs> Damn Dollar so you're telling me you're hating on Stotts but playing like Stotts system FS. Well, you know, we don't have any practices. It's a rec league, okay? Yeah. Um, and we well, move, well, honestly, my team, the teams that I play with, move the ball better than Stotts' teams. You know, obviously mm-hmm. it might be easier, but I mean, we don't practice like we do. You know, but we move the ball well and we cut well and usually, you know, I... 
I threw some dimes in the first half. I probably had like 14, 15 assists. Um, yeah, so I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. You got to – Dame Dalla, if you're dunking on people, apparently I got to I gotta check the Instagram he, messages after that. Cause he he said he sent you a message. But... I'll have to look at it right now, actually, because uh, – Apparently, Dame Dalla is five foot six and dunking on people, which I, I still don't believe. But uh, but our problem has always been an NBA offense shouldn't look like a rec league game, you know? Exactly. <laughs> like that. Exactly. It should be the should be different. Um, Let's see what we got. But yeah, I want your see. teams move the ball well when I'm on it too. True. That's three on three, though. <laughs> I know. Not like four on four. It's much different. Yeah, I don't have a message. I said send it to Blazers Uprise. I haven't seen the picture, Dame Dalla. I still don't believe you. Um, still don't believe you. Uh, but let's see here. Uh, so game last night. There's a question. Where where is it? Tori and Eric, how about Mario's recent success? Okay, so Mario has only just playing a bit better. Uh, but two games. <laughs> like two games where he. And I, I, I think I said this on the post game show last night. Like, this, it's not. He's not playing good. He's just not playing that bad. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, a success for him to not play that bad. You know what I mean? Like, uh, he, I don't know. He hasn't been. He hasn't like wowed me or anything. Blazer fans were far too high on him before this season. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've said that, I said that before the season, you know, um, and it, it, but it's nice to see him, see him, uh, have some decent games. Cause we kind of need somebody to step off, step up off the bench. Uh, for, for me with him, he needs to defend. He needs to rebound, especially with our bench playing Anthony Tolliver. Mario is only a six foot nine, uh, decent strength I think athletic like he needs to be he needs to be getting rebounds at a higher rate I don't think he's rebounded well enough that's been a complaint of mine with him all season long uh, he needs to help out Anthony Tolliver down there because Anthony Tolliver needs a lot of help um, part of it is just you know guys need to do a better job boxing out especially when you're undersized you got to box out um, but I wish Mario would rebound a little bit better but he just he just needs to attack and he's a better player if they play transition basketball, which I thought they kind of got a little bit too last night. They started kind of pushing the pace a little bit, especially there in the second half. But uh, he's not really a half-court player. He's not a guy who's going to create his own shot one-on-one. He's not a guy who is really going to do much in the half-court because he just he doesn't have the creativity with the ball. He doesn't have the handle with the ball, and he doesn't have the quickness to really like break down a defense um against a set defense which a lot of time our guards have to do because we don't we're we're stagnant so the defense is set um parker saying that he's like kcp Um, kcp is shooting like in the 40 percent for three this year isn't he (laughs) like kcp is a way better player than his own yeah oh one 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 thousand percent Okay, so I actually just got a message. Apparently, this is Dame Dollar dunking on somebody. You don't look 5'6", bro, but uh, I'll show it for the... Apparently, that's Dame Dollar dunking on people. Um, which, like, he's up there. That rim looks elite. If you're 5'6", that rim is short, or you're not 5'6". I don't believe that you're 5'6", but uh, you definitely <laughs> look like you're up there. I mean, good good stuff there, I guess. <laughs> um and do we have evidence that he actually threw that down? It's photoshopped. It might be photoshopped. That's why. Yeah. That's why. That's why I needed. That's why I needed video evidence. That's why I needed or, video evidence. Or that's not him. Or that's not him. Exactly. That's why I need video evidence. I need. I need you to take a video. Take a video saying this is Dame Dollar, fan of Blazers Uprise, and then turn around. And dunk the ball. Like go to the, go to an empty gym, get somebody yeah. to record it. Say, this is Dame Dalla. You are watching Blazers Uprise. Turn around, do a windmill dunk or something. To impress me. And and if you actually do it, I'll believe you. And I'll include it as an intro for for a couple videos or something like that. How about nice. that? Um, yeah. How about that? You can see the you can see the trampoline. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just got food delivered to me upstairs. I, I didn't know it was coming. 
Oh, but you know what? I'm gonna let it go cold for you guys. I'm gonna let it go cold for you guys, uh, because you guys are priority number one. My my Ooh. food is priority number two. I guess. The question is, what'd you get? Apparently, I got chicken nuggets waiting for me upstairs. I I don't know. I don't know. Um. Yeah. So anyway, sorry I'm late. What was the update? Scalabis here is out four weeks. Uh, probably out until like the first game after the All Star break. Uh, which yeah, could... reevaluated in four weeks. Yeah, but All Star break is in like four and a half weeks. So, um, Randall Pink four six one and can't dunk. I'm six four and can barely dunk right now. I'm just out of shape. Dame Dollar, you're you the one that said you play for Banks. Bro, we gotta like randomly just show up to a Banks game. <laughs> where is Banks? I feel like that's far though. It's uh out past where I'm at. Just like oh, a few X's no. down past me. Yeah. All the way out there, the hell. Yeah. Um Tori, have you Dave. dunked on anyone? No, I haven't dunked on anyone. I wish I was more athletic. But... Dame Dalla doesn't realize I have a lot of family and banks and stuff from my wife's side, and uh, I can check up on this real quick. Yeah, you got to go scout him, all right? <laughs> all right. You know, we'll start an AU program or something, and we can go scout him. Uh, we'll <laughs> get him windmilling and stuff. But, uh, no, I haven't dunked on anyone. I've gotten close once. One side... I missed a back rim, but it was maybe the highest I ever jumped. I timed my steps perfectly with somebody on my right hip. Rose off, off a two like Dame does. Driving to the middle, right, left. Back rimmed it. Uh, but, you know, it was the most disappointed I've ever been in my entire life, uh, to be quite honest. <laughs> uh, but, uh, I, I've turned down an oop in a game where, I, in an all-star game, somebody, you know, we got a three on no fast break. Somebody, like, literally got on their knee and, like, scooped it like threw it from the ground and not uh, two hand just two hand flushed it um that was maybe the coolest in game dunk i've done to be honest now you're trying to scout underage boys pause if you're an aau program scouting it has to be underage because it's high schoolers the hell are you talking about all right you just lost your spot bro you just lost your ticket to the nba like i was gonna be the trampoline that catapulted you to the nba you were gonna save the blazers you were gonna win us a championship but not now you're not even gonna make varsity bro um (laughs) but if you're doing that and you're dropping like 25 30 point games then why are you playing freshman team that's what i want to know like why aren't you playing jv because it sounds like you should be playing jv but anyway, so yeah, story story's not adding up here. Uh, no. <laughs> hey man, watch your language, bro. I, that, <laughs> I'll, I'll show your cursing, but well, watch it. Watch who you're talking to. Eb look seven six without shoes. <laughs> Eric Brandt looking like he's seven six. He, I wish. I wish he was seven six. Honestly, lob target, but like I can't even lob it like eight feet off the ground for him. I'm just kidding. I can lob it like eight eight feet. Uh, I can reach eight feet off the ground, so that's fine. <laughs> like nine nine feet's too high. <laughs> nine feet's too high. Yeah. Um, no, nah, Eric, you just gotta like lob it over the fender, get it to like land softly in his hands, and then he destroys him with the shoulder finishes. That that is Rip City three on three. That's what we do against me to bracket. He uh he trucked Jamie Hudson one year. He like lowered that was his shoulder, a, that was destroyed a me. her. Um, that wasn't me. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't do that. <laughs> oh, that, no, you that didn't was do that. HC. That was. <laughs> oh yeah, that was. I honestly was just making that up. But yeah, I remember we had a teammate that. <laughs> what? I don't really. I remember something like that. What? Detail it for us. I forgot exactly what happened. You like blocked her on a jump shot, and then next play, and we like, were up hip, like hip checked her or something. God. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> we are up like 12 2 and he's doing this it's like dude relax man relax i mean like jamie looked like she maybe played some high school basketball but um <laughs> yeah we had a teammate just <laughs> go try hard on her it was bad dame dollar says all i can do is shoot and dunk i just extremely hot that game and their defense was ass well there you go you gotta work out you gotta you got to be more than a freshman version if, of Ben McLemore. 
But I mean, if you're if you're a freshman and can shoot and dunk, like that should get you pretty far, shouldn't it? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, I'll train you for fifty bucks an hour if you want. You'll get to the NBA, I promise. Tommy Thompson wants us to go back to the NBA. Uh, he asked, with Memphis being a ninth seed, do you think they could be buyers in hopes of making the eight seed? Um, I do think that they could be a sneaky buyer team, but not necessarily because they're trying to make the playoffs, but because if they sell off all their veterans, um, they could get to a point where they fall far enough back to where they owe their pick to, or they don't owe their pick to the Celtics this year and that it becomes unprotected next year. So I think they want to be in that range where they're above the number eight pick. So they, convey that pick and then can use picks and trades yeah. in future years instead of having to worry about still owing the Celtics especially, a pick. Especially especially in this year's draft. This is a very, very weird NBA draft. Honestly, yeah. like there's literally no good prospect and the, there's no like legit prospect in this draft. There's no Luka Doncic. There's no even like John Morant, I think. I think like well, the number one uh, pick could be somebody that would like shock us if we heard who the number one pick is now. It could be somebody like, I don't know. I don't know. It could be shocking because nobody's like standing out right now, in my opinion. Nobody's really separating themselves from the pack. On ESPN, they had uh, that Schmitz guy from Draft Express on there, and he was talking about the battle for the number one pick, and it was Edwards, Wiseman, and Ball. Yeah, I think uh, it might not, not be exactly one of those like guys, though. Not exactly like the greatest – yeah, but I mean, it's just not. None of those guys are like, oh my god, can't miss prospect or well, at this worth point, worth tanking for. At this point, you might see Obi Toppin as the number one pick. I'm not saying it's gonna happen, but I don't think it's <laughs> impossible at this point. I think you, it might be one of those drafts. It, honestly, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of the 2013 draft where Anthony Bennett was the number one pick. There was really no like clear cut top pick. Like there was really no like. Uh, I mean, you know, you had Giannis in that draft and you had Rudy Gobert in that draft and you had CJ, but like those guys were like 10th and lower. So you might be able to find some value later on in the draft, but like in the, in the lottery, in the top 10, there's like no, there's nobody that really stands out to me. So Memphis losing their pick this year would be better for them, like losing it this year and keeping it next year. You know, they, they lose their pick. This year, if it's not in the top seven, so they're probably going to want to try to stay out of that top seven. You know, they are they don't want their, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, like, they'd be happy getting into the top three or four, but right. I, if you're them, I don't think you want to be picking ninth, tenth, eleventh. Um, you know, it's... So, yeah, for that reason, I agree with you, especially considering how weak this draft is, especially considering, like, how the talent... F- the talent isn't that good at the top, and it kind of falls off um after a so, few picks into the draft so it's like the difference that, between the 10th pick and the 30th pick doesn't seem like it's all that much to me no and that year you were talking about wasn't it nerland's noel until he like blew out his knee and ben mclemore who you already mentioned this yeah this podcast exactly. weren't those yeah weren't those like the two guys battling for the number one pick all year well I and heard then, before then the, they go like six and seventh or something well, i heard before the draft there was buzz that alex len might be the number one pick like that's you know and they were talking about like maybe victor oladipo uh otto porter jr was the third overall pick cj was not projected third that year i don't i mean may, maybe maybe Somewhere, maybe on one mock draft, he's projected third, but I don't remember him ever being projected that high. Patriotic Truth News. I always remember him being projected between like seventh and tenth, uh, and luckily he fell to us. Uh, but that's the thing people talk about tanking. It's like I don't really want to tank. For, you know, obviously, like we've discussed the logistical stuff about how that's like not really like possible logistically. Um, yeah. But like even if it was for this draft, the difference between the tenth and the twentieth pick, I think, is is minimal. I think it's minimal. I, I don't think there's really any difference. I think it's going to be like the 2013 draft where there's a lot of players at the top that are just average role players. Um, Wiseman, honestly, might not be a future all-star. Like, he's not really a can't-miss prospect at all or anything like that, and we didn't get to see him at the college level. Uh, but there will probably be some players uh, later on in the first round, maybe into the second round, that end up being all-stars someday. So... Uh, well- to that point, too, is 
in a draft like that, it's not that hard to move up from like 18 to 13 or something. If there's a guy you really like and we have all our future picks and now we have all these young assets that we can throw in trades that we haven't really had in, in previous yeah. years. So if there's someone you really like at 10 or something, it wouldn't be as hard to get as it was to move up to 10 in that 2017 draft that was loaded. Um, so like, I just, I just don't think it's, it's that big of a deal to uh, like the 13th pick versus the 18th pick. Isn't going to change the direction of this yeah. franchise most likely. Yeah. Um, but as far as Memphis goes, they'd be looking for a two or a three. They're set at point guard with Morant. They're, yep. they're set with their bigs. They got Jaron Jackson Jr., Valanchunas, and Brandon Clark. Uh, so they don't need a big. They need wings. Their wings are maybe the worst wing group in the NBA. Dylan Brooks is not good. Dylan Brooks is not good. He puts up like scoring numbers, but it's not efficient. He's not a good defender. He's just not a good player. Uh, other than that, what do they got? Kyle Anderson? Uh, Solomon Hill is playing minutes for him. Uh, I'm blanking on somebody. Well, they have Jay Crowder, but he plays more. Yeah, honestly, three, I, four. I could see them trading Iguodala, trying to get assets for Iguodala, and maybe like flip the contracts to get back for Iguodala somewhere else, and trying to get a wing. Uh, maybe it's like an Evan Fournier type of guy. Maybe it's an Otto Porter Jr. But like, if you put a Fournier or an Otto Porter Jr. on their team, and like, you know, a healthy Otto Porter Jr. on their team, their team looks like kind of scary. You got Morant, like, if you had, like, Morant, Fortier, Jackson, Valanchunas with Clark off the bench, like, that that's a solid team. I, I was pretty high on this team going into the uh, going into this season. I thought they were underrated. I thought Morant was going to show out like he's done. I thought, you know, Clark would be an instant impact player. Uh, this team this team is, is good. They're going to be tough for, for the... They're going to be battling with the Blazers, I think, all season long, to be honest. Yeah, um, it'll be interesting to see because, like, if they trade Iguodala, that doesn't affect their team at all right now because he's not playing exactly. for them. Exactly. Same with Josh Jackson. Um, they have, and you mentioned Solomon Hill's been playing a little bit, but that's three expiring contracts that they could trade to get up to a, a guy that could help them on the wings. Um don't know who that is. Would it it'd be interesting if they went after a guy like Wiggins. Um, but that's part of their yeah. problem right now is um, they don't have the ability to include a couple first round picks or or first round pick right now because of the Yeah. Um, and I don't think it's the, the earliest right. they can trade it. Yeah. I don't think it's the right move at either, you know. I'm just saying, like, if, if a star wing became available, that was perfect for them long term. Um, that's why they want to give up that pick this year so that they don't have to worry about not having it for being able to trade a pick for two or three years after this one. You know who would be the perfect option for them? Who? Kelly Oubre. That, that makes so much sense for them. But, like, I, you know, I don't think Phoenix is going to move him at all, but that could be a player that would be, like, a perfect fit. Just seems like... I don't know what it is with that. That just seems like Kelly Oubre in Memphis with Morant and Valanchunas and Jerry Jackson Jr. He fits their timeline. He fits the type of player they need. Uh, that makes sense. I mean, I wish I wish we could get Kelly Oubre given how he's gone off against us. Um, but I don't think Phoenix ends up moving him. So speaking of Phoenix, have you seen all the latest on them? No. Uh, apparently Booker and Aiton hate each other. <laughs> um, do they <laughs> can't, yep can't get along at all and then um is Bane's, that like an on-court thing or an off-court thing i guess something happened on the court their last game i haven't seen the actual footage of it i just read about it um and then baines is defending ayton and says that booker's in the wrong and that they're now they have beef um <laughs> so honestly uh, if if aaron baines says you're wrong you're probably wrong <laughs> Yeah, so there are all, I guess there's just a ton of in-house fighting right now. That's why they're better probably with Aiton off the court. But he's he's been, for the number one pick in that particular draft, he's been a huge bust so far. Yeah. Um, Honestly, at this I'm, point... I'm not saying he's a bust overall, just like compared to... They could have had Doncic, yeah. Trey Young, like... Imagine Trey Young and Devin Booker. That would be like basically Stephen Clay, like a young Stephen Clay. 
Um, you know, obviously a little different, but uh, at this point, at this point, the best move for Phoenix would literally be to trade Devin Booker this year, trade DeAndre Ayton this year, completely rebuild, get, you know, get good draft picks for the next three years because they suck, use the draft picks they get for those guys, and just do like a trust the process type thing. That would be the, because... 10th pick, 11th pick, 11th pick. Well, that's not going to make him that, that much better. Yeah, I just mean like Devin Booker honestly would have a lot of trade value right now. I don't think he ends up staying there after his contract is done. So maybe you've got, what, three, four-year window. I, I just don't see the, their path to contention with Devin Booker on the team. Honestly, I don't see how they're going to get to to being a contending team. And when your two best young players hate each other apparently uh, – I don't know, man. I mean, you look at the trade market this year, too. There's a lot of teams out there that probably think they can win a championship. There isn't a star available on the market this year. They could get so much back for Devin Booker. So, so, so much back for Devin Booker that it might be the right move. Honestly. So, Honestly. so would you rather do that or if Cat was available, give them a godfather offer for cat and you'd have booker and cat as your main who you know like each other i mean that that's the other option is but i don't think cat's available minnesota said they aren't going to trade him but if they were put a package around ayton and picks yeah um you know ayton isn't a bad piece to to start with for minnesota replaces towns at his as at his position Still very young, so they'd have time to build around him. Um, but uh, honestly, they 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 could get so much for Devin Booker that, it, in terms of like them trying to win a championship in the next like twelve to fifteen years, I think their odds for winning a championship are higher if they trade Devin Booker this year than if they keep him. If that makes sense, um, that's just my opinion. Yeah, I think they. I mean, when was the last time they made the playoffs? So. I... I'll look it up. It was but a while like, ago. I I don't think a team like that's gonna all of a sudden be like, okay, this isn't working. Let's just blow it up. They're like stuck with this, trying to make. They made moves to make the playoffs this year, or to like kind of contend for a playoff spot, not thinking of championship level yeah. uh, aspirations. So, um, yeah. I mean, who knows what they could get for him. Uh, it was, it was 2010. Was that the year they beat us in the first round? Um, not entirely. When sure. Roy, I think that's the year Roy had the meniscus surgery. Yeah, I'm pretty sure oh. it was. But I mean, I don't know who's who sells and rebuilds again first. Suns or Timberwolves? That's a tough question. Yeah, he was. Uh, they beat us four two in the opening yeah. round that year. Yeah. Uh, who sells and rebuilds again for Suns or Timberwolves? That's a that's a tough question. I don't know. Um, maybe hmm. uh, I I don't know. Uh, both those teams for, are like the exact same position to me. See, the Timberwolves can say, "Okay, we made the playoffs. We we've given this several years with Wiggins and Towns, and nothing's happening." Uh, let's just blow it up. Whereas Phoenix yeah. is like been bad for so long. They just want to like make the playoffs once just to like have some sort of, I mean, just think of how, how much people were talking about them earlier in the year when they got off to a good start. Um, like if they continued that for a season and made the playoffs, yeah. uh, that would be a lot better. So I think that's where their organizational mindset is at versus I could see the Timberwolves, um, being like, you know what we had cat, and Wiggins this year playing fairly well, and they still weren't even close to making the playoffs. Like, um, maybe we should do something different. They screwed up by getting Jimmy Butler. Imagine if they still had Levine with Markinen, with Towns, with Wiggins, uh, and then they would have had like a, a lot better pick if they didn't have Butler that season. Uh, they probably would have had a lottery pick. So who knows who they would have gotten there? But I mean. Well, I mean, imagine like Donovan Mitchell or something with yeah, Cat and Wiggins. It's kind of and... funny that the Jazz got Mitchell because they're a playoff team or like a borderline yeah. playoff team. Lose Gordon Hayward, just toss 
thought, or no, they were a playoff team. They were a playoff team. They won in the first round, uh, they, and they traded they up. Ha- they traded from tw- they traded Trey Lyles the twenty fourth pick up fourth, to thirteen yeah. and took Donovan Mitchell. What a f- what was Denver thinking in that? I don't. Know. Uh, Denver's made some really good moves, but that was a they could have had Donovan Mitchell with Jamal Murray. Are you kidding me, bro? Like they they would be my maybe my favorite in the West right now if they had Donovan Mitchell uh, instead of. Uh, I mean, they don't have either of the players they trade for. They basically trade Donovan Mitchell for Tyler Lydon and Trey Lyles. That yeah. like that's the thing. It's like Blazer fans are like, oh, we screw up the draft so much. We passed on, you know, we passed on Durant. But it's like, okay, Odin was like the consensus right choice there. You know what I mean? Like, oh, we passed on MJ. Like, yeah, that was a mistake. Uh, but I feel like Blazer fans think it's – don't really like realize how some other teams have screwed up. I mean, you look at that – Imagine if we traded Donovan Mitchell for Trey Lyles and Tyler Lydon. And we traded Donovan Mitchell to a team that is like a playoff team along with us in our division in the Western Conference. Yep. Like, it, but, oh, that that's rough. That's rough, man. Because that would have been – they would have – Jamal Murray and Donovan Mitchell, I think, would have complemented each other perfectly. They they would have been like good good compliments to each other and you you combine that with Jokic imagine Jokic throwing lobs to Mitchell, my goodness man they messed up. Well, even if they didn't take Mitchell, you know they could have taken Bam or John Collins or someone like that too. That and... draft was loaded, dude. That draft was so deep, so so deep. Honestly, like I probably take the, I mean like outside of the lottery, the talent might have been better than in the lottery because in the lottery you had like Fultz, you had. Dennis Smith Jr., Nilakina, uh, I'm blanking on so, – you had Josh Jackson, I'm blanking on some other names, but, like, you had some busts in the – Jonathan first, Isaac. Yeah, I mean, Jonathan Isaac was solid, but now he's hurt. I mean, but outside, you know, outside of the top ten, Luke Kennard's killing it this year. Bam, Adebayo's killing it this year. Donovan Mitchell, uh, John Collins, Anunoby is a starter for a contending team. Jared Allen on, is is a you mean on a new boy and an, and a new boy um Kuzma uh I, I'm for I know I'm forgetting somebody too I know I'm forgetting somebody uh I mean Josh Hart's decent but Josh Hart's decent yeah I mean like that's a that's some great talent makes Olshay look even worse for taking Caleb freaking Swanigan with the 26th overall pick that I literally haven't hated a pick as much as that when it was made but when it <laughs> When that pick was made, my girlfriend was watching it with me, and she was surprised at how mad I was. She was like, why? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, why are you so mad? I literally was like, hell no. And that, that reaction was 100% justified. That was such a silly pick. Silly, silly pick. That was, that was me with the Collins pick. <laughs> yeah, Lonzo was the number two pick there. Yeah, I mean, yeah. honestly, the, that draft was deep, deep, deep. Um, so anyway, I'm going to go eat. I'm going to get some food. I'm hungry. I haven't eaten today, so I got to go get some food. Thank you guys for tuning in to this podcast. Uh, we'll catch you tomorrow uh, with the post-game show. Yeah. I don't know if I have a game tomorrow. Uh, that's what's tough with Tuesday, Thursday games. We'll figure it out. Um, so, anyway, that's a that's a wrap. I got you if you know. Yeah, Eric, Eric will take care of things. Um, you might have to listen to his kids uh, bounce off the ceiling, off the walls and stuff, but, uh, you know. Eric will Eric will hook you guys up with that good content, just like that trade video he made. If you haven't watched it, go check it out. Also, I'm also planning on editing my mailbag uh, after I wrap up this podcast, so uh, that should be out shortly. So anyway, with that being said, that's a wrap for this podcast. I'll see you guys later. Peace out, go Blazers.